And long-term studies are showing that these aren't particularly good for you. Um, the real answer here is grow better. Now, of course, when we talk ENT problems, we're talking about deviant nasal septums. Big problem in modern medicine today. And, of course, what it's causing is as that top jaw drops back and down, eventually the nose gets dragged back as well. Initially, that nose is on a plate that runs almost through to the base of your skull, the septum. Eventually, that will get bent as everything heads south. Um, and it was interesting that you get these Romans with the, these hook noses. And that hook nose is caused by the, se the cartilaginous section pulling back, the bony section staying. But of course, what's happening here is only in a very limited percentage of the population that could eat a refined carbohydrate diet, even in that era, because they had money. And of course, the roof of your mouth is the floor of your nose. The more this happens, the more your sinuses will be compressed together. Um, your eustachian tube, well, it runs from the back of the um, nasopharynx back to the ear here. Well, if all this tissue is soft, if it's all hanging, when you swallow, you're not going to clear your eustachian tube. You're going to end up glue ear. And I know when I've gone into the ENT departments, I walk through the departments and the kids sitting, waiting, all like this, oh, it is the same as the orthodontic patients. They often are orthodontic patients. People who have grommets usually go on to have orthodontics. The jaw joint problems, are, I, I'm not going to go in there, but people who get jaw joint problems are frequently these same individuals. Yeah? Now we talk about whether some of these problems are ascending or descending. Well, if your tongue is being pushed down into your jaw, as I described with Peter Vig's work, it changes your head posture. Well, that's necessarily going to have a postural effect on the rest of your body. Whether you have ascending and descending, I know a lot of people talk about orthotics to change dental problems. I, I will stick on the scientific side of what I know. And um, of course, the adenoid faces, this dropping of the faces. Well, this is a gross change in facial shape. We often talk about the allergic shiner, which is this patch under the sh eye that really shines up when you've got allergies. But it's mainly due to the maxilla, the top jaw dropping down. That's what's causing the problem. Now, when we ask and ask who's affected, um, we look at the development of individuals. Even from a young age, you can make predictions with these not allergic shiner, but you can see the skin dropping down underneath the top jaw. Lips apart at rest. It's causing the floping forehead we des described, the flat cheekbones. Apparently large nose, the large angle between the lip and the nose. But she's got a firm chin. Not what I was describing, really. But of course, she's got that curved neck. What she's done is she's tilted her neck back like this. She's walking around like that to present a normal surface, a normal image to the population as a whole. And of course, here we've got Vincent. Someone who's grossly lengthened face, lips apart most of the time. Margaret Thatcher. I mean, look at this nose. Looks so much larger. Those cheekbones completely melted away. Face is grossly changed. Marty Fieldman. Now, this great describing how these orbits go. OK, he's been computer enhanced a little bit. But you can see that you get that frog-eyed look as that maxilla drops down. This is nothing new. Again, as I was saying, it's in, the, it's in the wealthier populations only in the past. But, you know, it's been around. I mean, he's got no cheekbones here. You can see the bulge of the eyes under, through, shining through. Um, you, you can have some nice-looking faces. You've got a good, strong muscle tone, because this now looks so normal. But he's got no cheekbone. I mean, where's that gone? It's all just heading south. Um, there's a certain odd little... Um, bits to this. Um, uh, Stephen Fry, he's got reasonably good muscle tones. So he's got reasonably, his jaw's in a relatively good position, but his tongue's nowhere. His tongue's not supporting this midsection of face. Does he have a large nose, or is that maxilla set back? Has he sucked back that whole mid face, because the tongue's not holding it up there? Um, and of course, do you remember jaws? You're all too young to remember that? 
Um, Richard Keel, of course, he's got really good muscle tone, but his tongue is very low, as his tongue's down in this bottom jaw. That's what's helped to develop this bottom jaw, is the position of his tongue in there. Arnie, he said he'd be back. He's, he's come down fairly evenly. His tongue's not perfect, his jaw's not perfect, so he's just lengthened, still with a relatively good balanced appearance. Now, here's my perfects, yeah? This is what you've got a really nice face. Look how cute and small that nose looks. What's going to happen to her face if I was to cut the nerves and watch her drop? Because it would drop and it would drop badly. Um, Kate and some friends, notice that two of her friends there are artificial because this is rare. Um, we're talking here about. Um, Perfection. Now, one here girl is using makeup, and the other girl's using her breasts. Keep your eyes off the fact that her faces aren't perfectly formed. Yeah? If you look closely here, you'll see the beginnings of those allergic shyness. She's sitting there with her lips slightly apart. I know it's a pout. But she's got a slight increase in length of her face. Now, that all asks the question is, is beauty in the eye of the beholder or not? Well, this is a great old wives' tale, but it doesn't seem to be. You've got two different faces here, a less short one and a longer one. Yes, she's still a pretty girl, but as a general rule, people with the longer faces aren't as attractive as the people with the shorter faces. And to prove this, some scientists got some one-year-old babies, plumped them on the mother's lap, put some up back projection, and watched where the baby looked at the most. And the babies consistently looked at the ones with the shorter faces, considered more attractive. They were so impressed, they repeated it with six-month-old babies, got the same result. Eye of, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder when you get a variation. Beauty starts with an absolute, it finishes with an absolute. In the middle levels, yes, you can decide which one you do like, which one you don't like. And that is in the eye of the beholder. But absolute beauty, no. We all agree. In fact, we all agree within the races. And the best faces in any of the races are more similar than the rest of the people within those races. Um, of course, Jude Law. Um, you see not really a lot of maxilla here. Yeah, these bags under his eyes. You see how his chin tips pointing out a little bit here. So good muscle tone, he's keeping that bottom jaw nicely in position, but the tongue's not holding the rest up. The tongue's not doing its position in the mid face. It's not keeping that section in there. Um, okay, Chiara and Angelina, both good jaw, both good muscle tone. You know, they grit their teeth and they get on with things in life. But I think Chiara has her tongue too low. Particularly compared, Angelina's not perfect, pretty good. But Kiara's got her tongue too low. She's trying hard with makeup, but she can't really cover up these flat cheekbones here. Now, I'll make a prediction with her that that jaw, because she keeps her tongue in that bottom jaw, that's going to get gently a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, like Daryl Hannah, if anyone old enough to remember a Mermaid that she was in. And her jaw's just got a little bit bigger over time. Because her tongue's not high enough. She keeps it too low in her jaw. 